Hey there. I want to ask um, y'all a question. I want you to think about how to know if you're an artist. I asked this past week in my free Facebook group and got some really great answers. It turned into a super inspiring thread that had over 600 answers the last time I looked. And there were so many fantastic ones. It's a question that I think a lot of people get a little hung up on when they're thinking about whether or not they're creative, whether or not they're an artist. Some people think that you have to sell artwork before you're really an artist. That's just not true. Some people think you have to go to school to study art before you're an artist. Again, not true. But I wanted to start with the external signs. There were some really great comments that talked about some of the outside signs that you just might be a little creative, that you just might be an artist. This one from Elizabeth was great, and I can so relate to it. She said, pretty much everything in your house has a bit of paint on it. That's certainly true of me. I try to keep it off the walls and off the furniture, but it has a way of creeping onto almost every surface. I'll never forget the time I was painting at night and went in to take off makeup or something in the bathroom and looked in there 15 minutes later, and there's phthalo blue all over the sink because I'd had it on my hands and didn't even realize it. It's one of the reasons I wear an apron when I paint, because it has a tendency to go everywhere. Gabrielle said, the back of your car is always full of plein air gear, just because it's just not right when you don't have it with you. Totally can relate to that one, too. The back of my car usually has, not the paints, but everything else that goes into heading out to paint, so I can just hop in and go, because... That is going to be the top of my list on most days. I had a really great comment, too. She said, you want the house to be built around your studio, not the other way around. Can you imagine building a house or designing a house completely around a studio? Whereas most of us have put in a studio in a part of the house that already exists. So you're taking over a part of the house as the studio rather than creating the house around the studio. It's a really interesting concept. All of those are external signs. It's if you've got paint smears on your forehead when you go to the grocery store, or you look in the mirror in the morning and there's blue on your nose, or if you realize your fingernails are dirty, which means you got paint on your fingernails, or if there's a permanent callus where your pencil or your brush gets held. All of those are outside signs that you put in a lot of time into practicing your craft, into doing the work of being an artist. But there's some internal signs as well. And the comments from these three that I'm going to read next, I'll talk about the internal stuff, the changes that happen inside you as you become more in tune to being creative. Sujata had a great one. Sujata said, when you look at the world around you and see colors, shapes, and values first, then notice the object. So you're looking at the world in a whole different way. Catherine said, when everything you look at, you study for shadows and highlights and color combinations. You just can't wait to paint. Kathy said, the creation means more to me than the outcome. Do you notice how all three of them are talking about looking at the world and thinking about process in a whole different way? So Sujata and Catherine both are talking about actually changing the way that you see color, value, lights, and highlights before you see thingness and objectness. That's a crucial switch that you have to make in your brain as you learn how to paint or learn how to draw. And the idea of the process being more important than the outcome is one of the key factors that makes it easier 
to become an artist because it means you realize that you're going to make some bad paintings at times or a bad whatever it is that you're making. And that's okay that you have to make the bad ones in order to make the good ones and that it's the process that you learn from, not the product or the outcome. All of those are really important. At the end, though, it doesn't answer the question. How do you know you're an artist? And ultimately, the way you're an artist is you decide you are one. When you decide you are one. And the, the great artist Marcel Duchamp declared that back at the beginning of the 20th century. And I don't think we've absorbed that idea yet. What makes you an artist? It's you. It's when you decide, you make the decision. That decision is what makes you an artist. Not some external outside stuff really about the paint on your nose or your apron or the degree that hangs on the wall or the number of sales in the gallery. Those are external signs. What makes you know you're an artist is when you've decided it. So those of you who, those are the people, those people who made that comment in the group nailed it spot on. All those other things are important too, but what makes you an artist is when you decide it. Lauren, Laura said, if you're wondering you're an artist, wondering if you're an artist, you probably already are. You just didn't notice. And I think sometimes there's a lot of truth in that becoming an artist creeps up on you and you may not even realize that you've gotten to that point, that you're there, that there has already happened. Then Michelle said, when you're an artist, when you believe it. That's the part that's hard for a lot of people is assuming enough authority within to believe yourself when you say, I'm an artist. That's what makes the decision, not the degree, not the materials, not the tools, and not the sales. It's that decision you make internally. All those other things can help you make the decision, but the decision happens Early on for a lot of people, you may decide when you're five years old that you're an artist. In fact, most five-year-olds believe they're an artist because they are. We lose that somewhere along the, the road and decide that to be creative, to be an artist, you have to be something else, fill in the blank. But I want to challenge everybody to rethink that. All of us are creative. All of us are born with a creative bone. It's an aptitude a tendency, not a talent, not a genius, but we're all born with an aptitude for creativity. What makes us an artist is our decision to pursue it, our decision to be that. So everyone can be creative. It doesn't mean everybody's going to be Michelangelo or Leonardo da Vinci, but everybody can create in some way, shape, or form. Everyone can be an artist. In fact, Everyone actually already is, but you have to decide how you're going to show up as an artist and how you're going to be creative. So there are four steps that I think are really important there. The first, declare it. It doesn't have to be something you declare to your neighbors, your family, and your friends. You don't have to put it on social media or Facebook, but it has to be something you say to yourself. So declare it, state it. Write it somewhere where you can see it. Step number two, you have to believe it. You have to really believe it. Then you need to commit to it. That's step number three. And by commit to it, that means you got to do the work. And the work is showing up consistently. That's step number four. So it's declare it, believe it, commit to it, and show up consistently. When you do that, it'll answer a lot of the other questions that are out there. Now, there were some answers to that question when I, I made that post in the group that really broke my heart. And they were the ones that were in line with the idea that if you're an artist, you have to give up the idea of making a living at it. 
that if you're an artist, you're going to starve. If you're an artist, you're going to be poor. If you're an artist, you're not going to make any money at it until you're dead. So I want to talk about those, not this time, but next time. Hang around, tune in again. I'm going to be back, but we're going to talk about that in my next broadcast because that's not true. There are lots of ways that you can monetize being an artist, and it's not bad. It doesn't mean you're less of an artist. You do not have to starve, and you don't have to, as one of the members said, have a day job that going to is something that you hate. I don't want people to think that they can't be happily creative. So we're going to talk about getting rid of that starving artist myth. It's one of the things I'm most passionate about. But in the meantime, I want you to think about following those four steps. Declare it, believe it, commit to it, and then show up consistently. And if you would like to share your ideas about what it is, how you know you're an artist, the ways that people can know you're an artist, I'd love for you to join our free Facebook group. It is over here in Artwork Living. So let me see if I can get that address and I'm going to pin it right here. Let's see if I can grab that. Pin it right here underneath the broadcast. And it should go to the top if I can pin it correctly. It's not going to let me pin it. Once again, Facebook, thank you so much. But anyway, it's going to be here in the group. If you'd like to contribute your own answer to that or just simply read one of the other 600, almost 700 comments, not sure what number we're up to at this point, follow that link and join the free Facebook group. Would be love, it would be happy to have you in there, and it'd be lovely to talk with you more about it. So think about following those four steps and reframing your whole idea of what it means to be an artist. So I think we've got, oh, I see one of those. We've got some comments here coming in. Leslie, welcome. Michelle says, when you have that urge to get up and paint something you just got inspired by, definitely. I get that, and I have been known to get up in the middle of the night to do that. Leslie says, I live in a one-room apartment, and it's just me and my animals, so I made it into an art studio. The rest is just not necessary. High five, Leslie. I've done that same thing. When I lived in New York, at first when I was up there, I lived in a studio apartment, me and my cats and my art stuff. So it literally was a studio apartment. You got to look at what's most important to you. So kudos for doing that. And Casey, hey, how are you doing? Good to see you. Denise says, I'm always saying I'm too fat to be a starving artist, so I call myself a struggling artist. Denise, stop that on both counts. That struggling artist thing goes right back to that starving artist idea. We're, we're going to have a long talk about that this week because I, I want you all to reframe that just a wee little bit. <laughs> just a whole lot of wee little bit there. Awesome. Fantastic. So if you'd like to join that group, we'd love to have you. Follow the link that is down underneath here and we'll get you right. In the meantime, happy painting everybody. Talk to you again soon. Bye bye for now.